Hey there, it's EJ here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, you're welcome. Thank you for subscribing. Guys, we hit our 1k subscribers. <laughs> so good, celebrating our little wins. Thank you for making it happen. All right, without further ado, we jump into our topic for today which is five ways to identify a wife beater five ways to identify a wife beater this topic is necessary because many people are having lovey-dovey relationships seeming lovey-dovey relationships not knowing that their relationships hit a rock by the time the marriage happens and sometimes if you don't have discernment you find that you are not even aware that there are symptoms showing that what seems like a very good relationship will end up in bad marriage. And most of the time it's obvious, unfortunately not to the people who are in it. But it's obvious that this, this relationship is going down the drain. And if nothing is done, it will end into a bad marriage. So if you really care for yourself, for your bliss, for your enjoyment, you need to know how do I identify symptoms of domestic violence? How do I know? that the partner, the personality in my relationship can cause me harm and evil. How do I know? So I'm discussing how to identify why beaters. Men, don't come for me. <laughs> um, I know that we, you know, we can have also husband beaters, but today my focus is on why beaters and we need to deal with it. Um, unfortunately, bad parenting is leading to bad personalities that we're having. We're producing bad personalities. People are becoming more cruel by the day right and we're having bad marriages guess what 70 percent statistics american family statistics show that 70 percent of marriages are now breaking up within their first one year that's bizarre i can't believe it i mean it's a shock to me that people who are getting married, 70 percent of them within a year are breaking up they are hitting the rock just within one year i mean but these are people who are dancing and celebrating on the wedding day, doing video shoots, pre-wedding photo shoots, promising forever together, forever yours. So what's going on? Just a few months after the marriage, some few weeks after the marriage, from some just in, in a few days after the marriage, the marriage has hit a rock. Why? Why are people dehumanizing themselves? Why are we going through the trauma of shattering ourselves, shattering our hopes? Why are we intentionally walking into pain? When there is a solution, when there is an out, all right? Marriage is not everything. That's the gospel truth. The truth is that purpose is even higher than marriage. So even if you're not married and you live your life fulfilling your dreams, pursuing your God-given dreams, you'll be more fulfilled. You'll be a happier human being. You will have a life. Instead of walking into damage, walking into turbulence, walking into gruesomeness, it's not supposed to be found. So human beings should marriage is not a fight. We shouldn't be found hitting each other, beating each other. People shouldn't be found dead. That's not your lot. I mean, it's not your lot. It's not your bidding. Your lot should be that you have joy, you have peace, you have enjoyment, you are prioritized. Your life is making progress. There's partnership, there's productivity because you both come together. How can you be a single person enjoying your life, enjoying your dreams, but the moment you marry, you are sad, you are depressed, you are broken, you are shattered, you are in pieces, you are on your way to hell? No. That's not God's design for our marriages. That's also not God's design for you. So if you would put away your sentiments and emotions and look really deep into what you call a relationship, it will save you if a relationship is in turmoil. It will save you if... That's a bad marriage waiting to happen. You may be walking into an accident without knowing it. You know, your friends may be talking to you, your family members may be talking to you, and you're not aware of it. You need to know this truth. It's important for you to know this truth so that it will save you and it will save your union. There's no need walking into what will kill you. You deserve joy. You deserve peace. You deserve life. All right? So that's why I'm discussing how to identify a, a marriage that will have domestic violence. How to identify a wife beater? If you, you know, have believed in the principles of choosing a life partner and working it, with, you know, without your sentiments and your emotions, 
you would enjoy peace, I tell you. So five ways to identify a wife bitter. Very straight up. Number one is if you're in a relationship and you realize that he always has an outburst of anger. To the point that he breaks his phone, smashes his phone, smashes your own phone, breaks the television. I have news for you, breaking news. You are next in line for that miracle, the moment you get married. So that phone will be you in the marriage. You need to know it. So, and I'm sure he's going to come back begging, I'm so sorry. Um, I didn't know what came over me. That thing that came over him did deliverance. I'm not joking. That thing that came over him is demonic and he missed deliverance. Outburst of anger is not normal. You are not designed to get angry to the point that you break things, that you are violent. So if your relationship is characterized by violence, by fighting, you know that marriage will not be any different. So you better prepare yourself. Is this what you want for your future? Or would you rather turn away now that there is still time? The next point is that he's always intoxicated. See, when a man is influenced by alcohol, hard drugs, and all the names that you have, that's a problematic relationship. And it bothers me that you're putting up with it. It bothers me that you are sure and then you're putting up with it because your values have been compromised, because you are looking to the very wrong things, because you now want money, you want physical things, you want things that would not last you, you, you want to live a life that you are not made of. You want to live a life, you know, of glamour. You want to show the world something that you are not. That, you know, you want to live a facade. You want to put up a picture that everything is all right and you're doing well when you're not. And whose business? Who cares? The real thing is that you are really enjoying the marriage or the relationship. Nobody cares about what you're putting up on social media or not. So, when a man is always intoxicated, he keeps late nights, he's always outside, 11 p.m., 12 p.m. Mm. He wants his control by alcohol, controlled by hard drugs. He will be violent. He will abuse that marriage. He will abuse you in that marriage. You need to know this. The third thing is that, is that a white beater likes power and control. So, where are you now? What's going on? Who are you on the call with? Um, I can't hear any noise. Who is talking at the background? Um, he, what's your finances? How much is your salary? How much are you making? Drop it here. Deliver it here. Submit it to me. Paying that money. He's always borrowing without giving back to you. He wants to control your finances. He wants to control your movement. Where are you? He must be the one to take you. You think it's love. It's not love. Where anytime you need to step out, you're going on a date, you want to run an errand, he has to be the one to take you there. Mm -mm. Sometimes it's not love. You need to look really deep to find if this is love or control. So a wife beta is very manipulative. So he's going to try to control you. He's going to be hard drunk. He's going to try to control your finances. So if you have to answer to where you are, give the next person four. I can't hear any noise at the background. There's a problem. The relationship is going down the drain. If you cross over to a marriage, it will hit the block. So prepare yourself. Is that what you want? No, I'm sure that's not what you want. The next point, which is the fourth point, is that a wife better avoids accountability of any sort. So they don't want to know that there's someone in your life that you can meet to talk about anything. So because they love control, they don't want to be under control. So you was talking about, can we go and see my pastor? He doesn't want to. <laughs> Can we go and see my, um, you know, there's an uncle? No, he doesn't. Anybody that he feels will know exactly what he knows. He doesn't want to associate with that kind of person. He needs to be aware that a wild bitter doesn't want to be under accountability. And I'm even wondering what you're doing in that relationship in the first place. Let me assume that you don't know. Now you know. Now you know. Do you want to still remain there? So no accountability, nothing. So your values are compromised. Nobody to call, nobody to call him. He's always threatening when there's somebody to call him. That insecurity is a sign that the marriage may hit a rock if you are not careful. The fifth one is that white beaters 
uh, of godly men. They are ungodly. They don't take. I'm not talking about religious people. I'm talking about people whose characters, people who live out the life that they profess. When someone says I'm a Christian, you find that Christianity is a lifestyle. There's respect. There's honor. Respect not just for you first, but for God first. There's honor for God. There's a life of total dependence. Not that the person is perfect. He makes his mistakes. But God, His Word, the Church, are His final authority. But when you find a man who bastardizes the Word, the Church, Christ, and everything that has to do with Christianity, you have found a very terrible person. So you need to decide. You know you want somebody who is, you know, up and about, husky guy. I don't want a dry Christian brother. You may meet a wet brother that will kill you. A wet unbeliever. So I know you want a happening guy. You may meet a happening guy that will take your life away. So you need to know these things now. It's not about who is happening now. It's about the real life there is in marriage. See, all this beauty we wear, all the glamour we wear, once the marriage sets in, the real life begins, where there's supposed to be responsibility. Managing a home, taking care of your building a home. Will he be available to do that? The last one I'll give you, which is a bonus, but very crucial, is that he's sexually active, he's perverse. So he's angry with you because you're not willing to give it, his, you know, he, he's demanding you must have sex, he must be sexual, and all of that. I don't even ask you, are you doing a sexually active relationship? You're going to have forever to sleep with your man when you get married. So, what are you doing now? Why are you doing what you're doing? Are you really having sex because you love to have sex? Or are you manipulated? Are you being victimized? Are you being pressured into it? Is that what you want? Are you okay with the tears? What exactly is it that you enjoy in a manipulative relationship that is giving you all that joy? So you need to think, I need to, you need to have an out now. Decide for yourself the kind of future you want to have. I don't want to tell you the pain that is in a broken mind. Don't dream it. Don't say, I can walk away now. It's not as easy as it sounds. People have walked away and are lunatics. People have walked away and have not gotten themselves together. Children are bearing the blood of this madness. We can't continue that way. 70% is too much. The statistics are rising. We need to save the next generation. We need to save ourselves. Trauma and pain. Right? We are having all the talk on mental health because we are not dealing with these issues from the roots. So deal with your own issue now, now, now. Whatever is your problem, you have image problem, you have low self-esteem, you are poor, you need financial help. You can find out all that. You can find solutions to all that without having a man in your life. I'm telling you, fulfillment is higher than any other thing you can think of. And you can only find fulfillment. Not a marriage alone. Excuse me, marriage will not even give you fulfillment. It's in purpose. It's in God. Your fulfillment is in God. Your fulfillment is in living the God kind of life. Divine life. That's what you think. I'm sorry if you're already married and you're in this relationship. You're in this menace and situation. Go and seek for help. Seek for counsel. Don't die in a marriage that is manipulative and abusive. Don't hide in your shame. Seek for adequate help. Go for a spiritual authority. Go and seek for help. You need help. That's not your lot. Your lot is not to die. That's not your lot. Your lot is to have life and have it more abundantly. That's why Jesus came. Abundant life is not death. So please, I beg of you, go and find counsel. Go and find joy. Go and find spiritual help. Seek for help in the appropriate places so that you'll be free from any form. I pray for you today, if you're in an abusive relationship, that you find air to breathe, you find freedom. Let the yoke of that abusive relationship be broken of you. I also pray for you today, if your mind is already abusive, that you find a solution, that God comes through for you very quickly, and that you are liberated from that yoke. And that your partner, your spouse, your husband will also find Jesus. Amen. Thank you.
you so much. Oh, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Why do you think our statistics are rising? Why do you think our marriages are broken? What's going on? You know, share your experiences with me. Thank you. I'll see you next time. It's your girl, Eve.